Welcome, and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you, because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions, to enhance yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is with Laura Bursko, a certified massage therapist from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome, Laura. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's so a delight to have you on Knowledge for Wellness. And this is your first time on. This is, thank yeah. you. So we'd love for you to tell my viewers a little bit about yourself and your love and your passion and why you chose to be a certified massage therapist. Well, I became a massage therapist kind of by accident. It okay. was on my journey to being a physical therapist. Oh. Um, at a young age, as a young athlete, I got injured on the field, and the only thing that really brought me back was physical therapy. Oh. Um, vigorous massage, um, actually from the therapist, and then exercise really helped rehabilitate me and bring me back, and she was the, one of the only people that really believed in me. Okay. Um, and because of that, it, it really struck a chord with me as what I would like to do when I got older. Mm -hmm. and. So actually, when I went in to get my degree in kinesiology at the U of M, that was my plan. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, well, you have to pay for school. So I, I remembered that massage did so much to help me that I went into massage therapy. I took a year off mm -hmm. from my, um, my four-year degree. And then um, I did 750 hours at Bryman Institute. Okay. And I graduated with honors. Mm -hmm and came out with a certification in massage. I went back to college, finished my bachelor's of science degree in kinesiology, and while I was doing that, I worked as a massage therapist. I traveled, I went to people's homes, and then I worked at Lifetime Fitness Corporation in their spa and worked there. Okay. Um, I did that for three and a half, four years before I started my own business, and I've been doing my own business for about two years now. So altogether, I've been a massage therapist for about six and a half years. Oh, wow. Um, I found a lot of success in it. I've had thousands of hands-on hours mm -hmm. um, in massage, and um, you know it's been really successful. I've worked for with cancer patients, with children, babies. I've worked with people like everyday warriors, but then I've also had the privilege of working with professional athletes, um, and that's where I found my most success. So, Laura, it sounds as if it caters to any age. It does. It can be helpful for babies, especially if they have colic. It can mm -hmm. be very soothing to them. Mm -hmm. It can help for children and young adults who are going through growing pains, mm -hmm. especially now that more kids and young adults are playing sports or more active. Their parents are putting them in more things. It can help with a lot of that muscular relief of tension or soreness that they may have mm -hmm. um, and joint, joint flexibility. And then it helps with our everyday warriors, young adults. Um, that are working in the workforce and are really stressed out. They can come in and find a lot of stress relief with massage. And then it helps with the elderly. I mean, it helps increase the circulation. They might mm -hmm. not be getting as much blood flow, increase with range of motion in their joints, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can be, so it can definitely be beneficial at any age. Sure. Um, so let's say I walk in, and so what could I expect a massage to do for me then? It really depends on your health and your wellness goals. Mm -hmm. um, if you lead a stressful life, stressful job, you're going to want to, you know, that will help the massage therapist know what kind of massage is good for you. Mm -hmm. If you want stress relief, it can be a really relaxing massage. If you've had an ailing injury for a long time, the therapist can address that. Yes. Yeah. So you look at the person as a whole, what they do professionally, if they're on a computer all day or if they bike, you know, or work out. So I Definitely. like the idea that you do look at them individually so each person can expect something personal. Absolutely. You. Everything mm -hmm. can be incredibly customized for that person and it always is. There's never really a cookie cutter massage. Mm -hmm. um, so depending upon that person is how often they would receive a, a massage and also the end results. If they want to get better within, let's say, two weeks and you'd probably see them quite often if they have a marathon coming up or, or something like that. So you will categorize, categorize to them exactly, you know, 
their end result if they have an injury. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of my clients, I'll tell them, you want to come in every four to five weeks. You want to come in for maintenance. You don't want to come in when you're hurting the most, mm -hmm. when you're the most stressed out. Sure. Um, it, it's best to come with a plan. And for those who are injured or have a goal in mind, like a marathon, then there can be a catered plan to them. Mm -hmm. You know, coming in once a month until your, your race is there, coming in you know, three days before you're racing, you know, actually preparing for it. Yes. Um, and then actually coming for recovery massage as well. If you're yeah. training really hard for something, come mm -hmm. in, you know, rejuvenate your muscles, rehydrate them, re-oxygenate them through massage and blood flow. Sure. So can you go into a little more depth with the oxygenation of the actual blood? I know that people that don't exercise as much, this would be beneficial for those because they don't have to be someone that is into sports, but just to keep the blood flow when you have poor circulation in your hands and your feet. So talk about that a little Massage bit. Massage can sure. definitely be a workout for mm -hmm. a person. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always best for somebody to get a deep tissue massage, especially if they lead a more sedative lifestyle. Sure. But it can be beneficial. I mean, you're actually manually going over muscles mm -hmm. and that actually works out the muscle works out any you know adhesions that might be in the muscle mm -hmm. and actually brings blood to the area yes. rushes blood to that muscle mm -hmm. which um, increases the health of the muscle increases the blood flow which helps with mobility which helps with flexibility and because of that that's actually gonna you know keep the person healthier keep them a little bit more active um, it's recommended to do exercise if you're going to be doing massage but you know, it can help that person who's not necessarily the all-star athlete. Yes, exactly. So, And it seems as if people are becoming more and more aware of certified massage therapists, but I'd like to have you discuss the difference between you being a certified massage mm -hmm. therapist and maybe going to uh, another facility that also offers massage. Well, I have my my bachelor's of science degree in kinesiology. It's a study of human movement. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge foundation and a huge, advan a huge advantage that I have compared to others. Um, I work in a private studio. I share it with a chiropractor. Okay. I have the opportunity to actually collaborate with the doctor. Um, I also collaborate with a physical therapist. So I'm always around and constantly surrounded with knowledgeable people, doctors, who are in the field. Mm -hmm. um, so between the collaboration, my own personal background, I'm able to you know, really put my best education forward and really educate my own clients. It's a, you know, a private facility, so they're never rushed with you know, 15 people in the waiting room. Exactly. It's always one-on-one. -on -one. It's always a very comfortable situation for them. And you know, I take pride in what I do and you know, I mostly specialize in deep tissue and sports therapy, and that's something that, you know, a lot of generic places aren't going to really offer, not necessarily. Sure. So. Well, that sounds great, you know, working alternative medicine and, you know, working with a chiropractor hand-in-hand hand so you can benefit that patient. It is. So uh, how is it that you work together then? Well, in a chiropractic situation, you know, their focus is on the spine. Mine's on the muscular system, okay. um, and theirs is on the spine nervous system. They want to make sure that information's getting to the body, and when the spine is compromised, they have to figure out a way to adjust it and, you know, align that body so the information can be sent efficiently. Sure. So how we can work well together, um, for instance, if... Uh, a person is out of alignment, a lot of times muscles, not only do they aid in movement, they also um, help aid in protecting the skeletal system. Sure. So if it's compromised or out of alignment, a muscle can actually tighten up, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of the stress that we feel. Sure. So in um, adjusting that, it can help release the muscle, mm -hmm. making it easier for a therapist to work, or it can work vice versa. A massage therapist can go first, do the massage for a client, help release the muscles, which mm -hmm. makes for a better adjustment. Sure. And oftentimes helps sustain the, the alignments and keeps a nice hold on things. Wow. Yeah. So. That sounds fantastic. And you also mentioned a deep tissue massage. Yes. So that's another type of massage. So how many different types are there then? In massage, they're really going um, a couple of different ways. I mean, massage has been around for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. It's an Eastern medicine. 
Um, there's shiatsu, reiki, cranial sacral, a lot of energy work. Mm -hmm. And then now it's becoming more westernized and adopted. Yes. And, you know, a lot of times we recognize that through Swedish massage, which is a lighter effleurage. It's called effleurage, which is a lighter stroke massage. It's not as painful or invasive. And then there's the deep tissue massages, the massage that includes lots of range of motion, which they sometimes call sports massage. Okay. Um, so you, you're kind of going two ways. It's either going to be an Eastern medicine massage or Western, but they're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. A lot of times therapists are trained in everything and can kind of go back and forth based on the person's needs. So for instance, if you came in and you're an athlete, mm -hmm. I can do deep tissue work on you if you can handle it. But uh -huh. let's say you had a tragedy happen. Mm -hmm. I can come in and give you a very nice, relaxing you know, energy type work massage where you can just relieve yourself of stress. Okay. So massage yeah. can be very interchangeable in that sense, but there are very many modalities, mm -hmm. you know, that exist out there. Yes. And so let's say I'm thinking, oh, I've got a tightness in my shoulder, you know, so is there a specific time I should come in and get a massage or? It's always best if you come in before there's pain. Mm -hmm. It's always better to do pain management as opposed to you know, pain, um, pain, like you want to do it before you're actually in pain yes. and really hurting. So mm -hmm. it's always best to come before that. Um, but if you are hurting from the shoulder, it's always, you know, if you're having shoulder pain, like you said, mm -hmm. it's better to um, consult with a therapist, see how often you should come in, you know, try to attack the problem and see if the more often you come, the more you can, you know, create sustainability in the muscular relief, seeing if you can loosen up you yes. know, tension. And well, I love the idea of going to a certified massage therapist, but I'm not sure that they're certified or, you know, exactly what their credentials are at the time. Yeah. So what should I look for when looking for a massage therapist then? Yes. Um, actually, it's it's quite, depending on where you are in the country, where mm -hmm. you are in a state, sure. you know, there's different laws, there's different licensing programs. Every state is different. Some mm -hmm. states don't actually have a licensing program. Oh. Within that state, though, however, you can have cities that will have specific licensing programs for certified massage therapists. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, St. Paul has a licensing program, but Minneapolis doesn't. Oh. So... You have to be a little bit careful when searching for a massage therapist. Look for their credentials. See where they went to school. Sure. It's okay to look and see where that school is and mm -hmm. how many hours they, you know, require of their therapist. Sure. Um, you know, not only that, you want to um, just look in, to see in general, in your general area, what the licensing program is. So when you do approach a therapist, you know a little bit about them and mm -hmm. you can always be safe and reassured that they're certified in what they do. Right. And so that brings me to a question, you know, would I get a different experience if I saw a massage therapist at a chiropractic clinic versus maybe a spa? It's a tough question. They're okay. very different venues. Okay. Um, it depends on the mission of that actual venue, but you're going to see chiropractic clinics a little bit more of a clinic setting, and then you're going to see spas that are, you know, candles and ambiance, and the atmospheres can be very different. Right. But I've worked in both settings. Okay. I've worked at, in a spa, and I've also worked in a chiropractic clinic. But I've also worked in a professional gym, and my massage has never really changed. I've always been focused with deep tissue, with sports and rehabilitation massage. So, you know, it's really finding that individual therapist um, and connecting you, with them as well. Connecting with yeah. them, just like any doctor yeah. where you're going to have one that focuses in cardiac, one that focuses in neuro. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're gonna find a therapist is that, that's going to either focus on the energy work or focus on deep tissue or focus on just on relaxation. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't necessarily make a difference where you go as long as you really know your therapist. Right, and feeling comfortable with them, mm -hmm. you know, on a personal level. Yes. You know, because I know a lot of people you know, being touched by a stranger and then they get to know you a little bit better. And so that's mm -hmm. really nice. But it also brings me to another question and, and my thought of, I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable having to undress or, you know, do you have a criteria or do you just let them keep within their comfort zone? 
Absolutely. When I have clients, especially for the first time, come into my office, I always encourage them to dress to their comfortability. Mm -hmm. um, that always makes sure that we're both on the same level. Sure. In a massage room on a table, it's set up usually traditionally with sheets and a blanket and or a blanket. Mm -hmm. um, because of that, you know, the client's always instructed to get under the sheets. Um, and with that, they can dress down to their comfortability, but they have every, you know, I guess I don't know how to put it. Uh -huh. um, as far as, it, it's difficult because everyone's gonna be a little bit different as far right. as their comfortability, but if you come in for a deep tissue massage, more mm -hmm. than likely you're gonna be, it's suggested that you dress completely down. Mm -hmm. um, that's when massage therapists are cued in to um, apply um, draping, mm -hmm. which is a skill that they're given, you know, in school. They learn to drape, which actually helps with the modesty of the client, helps with the security, mm -hmm. and that's used with the sheets. So, you know, massage therapist never sees anything, and they're able to do the work that they need to do. And always, you know, they're always making sure that the first priority is the comfortability of the patron. Yes, exactly. So. And even to introduce it for maybe 15 minutes of first couple of times you can you know get rapport with that person as well and then then the trust builds from there or just sitting and seeing what their issues are and say well I would suggest that we would you know do it you know start off with this and this and this and right just, you know a personal right. note is always just so nice to do that right and and you'll yeah. find that you know you'll have elderly that come in and they're very modest people oh, and very. when they come in you, ju you just have to respect them and you mm -hmm. have to work around it and when it comes down to seriousness or a serious issue that you need to address you know that's when you kind of meet each other in the middle and say okay mm -hmm. I understand your comfort zone and I'll do my best to be respectful within it but mm -hmm. we're gonna have to meet halfway somewhere yeah but for the most part, you know, usually everyone's pretty comfortable with it, mm -hmm. you know, after the first couple of sessions. Right. And I also understand if someone is actually there for a long duration, um, you know, it, it pretty much, like you said, is a workout. And if they've had an hour massage, then you also even suggest that they have someone pick them up because it, or they have to sit for, let's say, about 20 minutes you know, before they actually drive because... <laughs> Depending on yeah. what kind of work they're getting, um, especially deep tissue massage, I mean, it can range from half hour to three hours. Mm -hmm. I've done three hour deep tissue massages and it's vigorous, vigorous work. And especially for the clients, it can be, you know, deep muscle work can be very invasive, very exhausting. Um, and because of that, it's always suggested that you drink tons of water mm -hmm. before you come into your massage that keeps you hydrated. Okay, so let's say how much beforehand, before I have a schedule, I'm going to meet with you on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. So would you like me to start drinking water two days prior or... A you know, it's, depending on the work, if you're going to get a really deep tissue or invasive massage, it's always good to have a couple extra glasses of water the night before. Okay. Um, and then a couple of glasses before you come in. Mm -hmm. And that's going to really help keep you hydrated. When you have dehydrated muscles, it sometimes can hurt a little bit more to get that work done. And then afterwards, you're always going to want to drink a lot of water. Sure. The massage therapist is going to be pushing a lot of toxins out of those muscles, mm -hmm. a lot of adhesions, and moving a lot of blood around. And because of that, you can get dehydrated. So it's always best to drink water. It will rehydrate the muscles, but then it's also going to be, um, you know, good to flush out, you know, extra toxins that, toxins that may be pushed out of the system. Exactly. So to you, what is a lot of water? A lot of water... You know, drinking a lot of water, I would say if you drink six glasses of water a day, drink 10 that day. Oh, okay. You know, so it's not gallons upon gallons of water. You mm -hmm. don't want to get yourself sick or anything. But, right. And then um, for those who probably don't drink any water, maybe four or five glasses is enough too as yeah, well. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely at least, um, at least 32 ounces, mm -hmm. you know, to 64 ounces after a massage. It's always suggested. Not all clients do it, and some mm -hmm. are fine, but some get really can get sick from a massage yes. if they're not, you know, taking care of themselves after. Right, and that is very important. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize how much water is, and I know they put it in a pitcher, mm -hmm. and they try to drink that every day. And it just makes you more aware of the lack of water and how beneficial it is for your body. Right. 
Now you have uh, some pictures that you had brought, and so this young lady um, that you were working with, what is it that you're doing with her? Um, with her, we were doing some muscular work in her shoulders and her neck. She's a professional um, show bodybuilder. Okay. Um, she usually tends to have more problems in her upper body. She also has three kids, so she's constantly running around, picking them up. Sure. So we were doing a lot more work specifically with her neck and shoulders, trying to release things, trying to move mm -hmm. things apart. You know, okay. as you get tighter and tighter, your muscles want to bring you closer together and sure. bunch you up. So. Yes, and she seems as if she's getting results as well with you? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Her training regime, she, um, she's actually, you know, feeling better in between her sessions. She's lifting more powerfully, um, and she's actually feeling great. She's not having all that soreness that you would originally see okay. with somebody who doesn't see massage, I guess. Okay, and then... Um, you have another picture of you and a very tall man. <laughs> and yes, if you could um, tell us a little bit about that picture as well. Um, well, that is John Thomas. He's okay. a professional basketball player. Mm -hmm. um, he played in the NBA for several years, played for the University of Minnesota. He was okay. a gopher. Okay. Um, he currently plays overseas. He's a very tall man. Mm -hmm. um, he recently, um, at 35, wanted to go back into um, professional basketball here in the United States. Okay. So he had a very, very tight um, training schedule, vigorous, where he was working out four hours a day. Oh, my. And once a week, we'd see each other for about three hours, and we went through the gamut together. Mm. Um, and a lot of it was rejuvenating the muscles, working with strains, getting him back to health. Um, a good example of him, actually, was at training camp. He had hurt himself, and they said it would be about six weeks before he could get back on the court. Okay. And he was back in a week. Oh. After, you know, Working two, with you? Yeah, after mm -hmm. about, you know, six hours of massage together that week alone, um, we were able to rejuvenate the muscle, help with the strain, mm -hmm. you know, re-educate the, the muscle. And, you know, he was, he did really, 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 really great. So wow. That's great. And so when... You were talking about these professional athletes that you're working with. It's a very comfortable setting, very private, and you know you work one on one with them. So you look at their schedule and and kind of schedule in if they need extra for that. Like you said, he wanted to get back into playing. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. So uh -huh. usually, um, for instance, I work with some of the Vikings players. They have a very specific schedule once a week. They have mm -hmm. a specific game time. They have specific days off. Sure. They come in on their days off or when they can, and we usually try to work it out based on their um, actual game time. We want to always, you, when you're an athlete, you always want to come in about two or three days before a sports you know, event of any kind um, that helps, you know, really set you up for a good performance, keeps you healthy. Um, so, but if, for instance, one of those athletes were to get hurt, you know, I can always try to find a way to fit them in so we can start working on the injury almost immediately. Sure. So, yeah, that sounds great. And in these pictures, I see that this is your personal room that you're working with. And yes. So when I go in, is there, you know, a conversation that takes place or can I just listen to music or what is it that you recommend at the time? Well, I always try to give people enough time when they first come into the office. I share the office with a chiropractor. Okay. So when you first walk in, you're going to be welcomed in a reception room and there's water and there's magazines, things you can do to kind of settle down so mm -hmm. you're not worried about the traffic that you were just in or your yes. work day. And we start there. I bring you back to the room. Mm -hmm. You know, I ask you how you're doing in general and then what you want to focus on in the massage. It's sure. always about the client and what they want. Mm -hmm. So if they, you know, usually get deep tissue, it doesn't throw me off if they say they just want to relax. Sure. If they just want to work on their neck and shoulders for an hour, we do that. If they want a full body, we do that. So a lot of it is just catered to figuring out what that person needs. Um, I guide them into the room, let them change. Mm -hmm. um, I leave so they can get under the covers and mm -hmm. you know get ready and situated on the table. Um, I start music for them. Mm -hmm. And then when they're all set, I go in there and we begin our session. Yeah. What a great personal note that you work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Well, we do have a few minutes left, and I'd like you to just shout out to my viewers um, a little something and go ahead and connect with them as well. 
Um, if anyone's watching this, I welcome all of you to contact me and we can have a free consultation and massage. I'll answer any questions that you may possibly have. And then for your very first massage with me, I'd like to offer you 15% off. Great. So Laura, I'd like to thank you so much for your wonderful insight in educating my viewers on a certified massage therapist. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes, thank you. If you'd like more information, please contact Laura either at lberskow at gmail.com or 612-251-0013. And I look forward to having you view other shows of Knowledge for Wellness televised throughout the Twin Cities area or visit my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com for more detailed information in your area. And I hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. <laughs>